Hi, hello and welcome. Today we will be talking about vector brushes and how to create them in Affinity Designer. If you've already created them in Procreate, you probably wonder why you'd have to recreate them in Affinity Designer and there are a couple of reasons. The first one is that Affinity Designer allows you to amend those lines afterwards in a non-destructive way. You can make them thicker, thinner, change the color, change the shape of them and all of that. You can also use the lines to create curved borders, which is quite impossible if you want to include a very long design in Procreate. And you can also scale them and make them bigger, smaller, depending on your needs. It also does help with speeding up your process and you mainly would recreate them in Affinity Designer for efficiency in your work. So we're going to start with the new document and I will create our draft document that we will be using to test our vector brushes. And it's 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixels. Like so, just a blank canvas for now. Now to create a vector brush, we have a couple of options. We will go to the brush menu and in the three line on top, you have the three main options to create your vector brushes from scratch. Now the first one is the new solid brush and I will not be going into that today. This is just to create a new round brush with some uh, adjusted settings over there. You can play with them later on. But the two that I was using the most are the new textured intensity brush and the new textured image brush. And what is the difference between those two? The intensity one creates a stroke based on the opacity values of a raster image. And the textured image brush creates a stroke based on the color values of a raster image. So those are the two different options. What I've been using the most is the new textured intensity brush because I come from working a lot with line art. And if you use a black line work in textured image brush, it will prevent you from changing the color of it. Today, I will go into the new textured intensity brush and we will recreate the same brush that we've made in the one of the latest videos where I explain how to create the parallel lines of the coastline brush. And if you want to see how to make them in Procreate, you can see that video over there in the corner. So for this, we will actually create a new canvas. And in the new document, I will change the settings of the canvas to a thousand pixels by 4,000 long. So it's a thousand pixels wide by four, thousand pixels long so it will be a very long rectangle like so. The intensity brush works white on black so wherever you see the white color that will, will create your stroke and where the black color is this will fade away and won't be shown on the brush itself. So I will start with creating a black rectangle over the entire thing and then I will add two rectangles one on top and those will be white so we can remove the outline and change that to pure white and then the second one if you hold two fingers you can duplicate it while dragging it using the arrow so the copy one I will move to the bottom and I will make it slightly wider than the top one here it doesn't matter if they centered because our canvas is actually in the middle of it you can see the brief lines in the black surface where your canvas actually is. So if we export it, it will only show the canvas inside of it. Now what we need to do, we need to export that into files. So the brush settings from Affinity Designer, as far as I'm aware, they will not import pictures from your gallery. You have to save them somewhere on your iPad. I'll change that into coastline brush and I will share that to files. You should already have Affinity Designer folder on your iPad. I have to because I did have a previous version of Affinity Designer and it still saved the folder itself. So I will use this one and then brush pictures. So coastline brush, I will save it here. Now we can cancel that. And if you go back to your projects, you can now choose the 4000 by 4000 canvas that we've created to test our brushes. 
we'll go to the brush menu and on the three line menu we can go now to new texture intensity brush and when you click on that it will open up your file explorer where you can look for the picture that you've saved so this is our coastline brush and I will click on that and you will have a little preview here of how it will look on your canvas so as you can see the black parts are not visible and the white ones are creating the parallel line with the thicker bottom and the thinner top line you can adjust the width of it if you wish so I will increase that to about 150 pixels just to be sure and then in body you can either stretch it or repeat it but in our case it will not make that big of a difference so I will leave it as stretch for now I will leave everything else as it is for now and click OK. Now we have our new coastline brush. The brush will be named after the picture that you chose. So if you swipe left, you can edit, rename and do all sorts of things with your newly created brush like so. With the brush tool on the left hand side and this brush selected, we can check how it will look like. So I will remove the fill color and choose our line color as a brown just so it's not a stark black one and we'll start creating the line now because it's vectors um, you don't have to cross over the line to make it one continuous one you can just choose the node tool and connect those two nodes and I'm just gonna align them to make them super smooth and here's our weirdly looking island if you ever created or seen an island of this shape like in the real world I doubt that I'm just gonna move a couple of nodes to make it look a bit better so as you can see this will create a one perfect continuous line as you draw it and as you connect it you don't have to go and remove any overlapping parts or those weirdly looking dots as you've seen in a procreate where we start the line in the middle of the canvas rather than on top and again in some cases you will have those little jagged lines on the very pointy moments of the line but to fix that all you have to do is just slightly increase that node to allow it to create a little bit of a curve outside of that line we can also adjust the color of the lines size of the lines at the moment it's 150 pixels we can make it smaller we can make it bigger like so with the slider or we can just tap on the values and we can increase it to any size that we want and with that created it's a simple way of opening your mountain asset menu if you do have one and with a couple of clicks you can actually create a lovely looking map in no time whatsoever so i'm going to change that to the colors that we previously used i'm going to slightly increase the size and because it's an asset i can go inside and i can actually adjust the thickness of that line to match with the outline of our map and here you go you can play with that you can add more assets if you have some now what we can also do we can change the fill to be a bit of a yellowish to represent the land of it however because the brush will create a see-through middle you can see that that yellow land color would go over the first line therefore it's not the best way to use this brush for but you can quickly amend it by duplicating the shape. Now we're gonna remove the fill from the first one and from the second one, we will remove the outline color just so we have the inside of it. And we can also go to stroke and we can remove that brush effect if it's still there persistent. Just click on that little cross there. Okay, with the now tool selected, what we can do, we can just move them slightly to cover the entire shape of it without going across the line of the coastline itself now let's say we want to add our border so for that as we created those two rectangles we can create border design that we would like to use in our work we can also reuse pictures that we've created in procreate to create the vector brushes in affinity designer 
So this is one of the borders that we previously created, that I've previously created. And if you want to find out how to do that, you can check that video over here. I am going to change the background color to black because in Affinity Designer, we use white on black for the intensity brush. And with that done, I will export that into the same folder. Save to files on my iPad, Affinity Designer, brush pictures, and I will change that to frame circle. Okay, save that. Now we can go to Affinity Designer and again on our test image over here, I can just press on three lines, add new textured intensity brush, frame circle like so. And as you can see on here, this will stretch it to begin with. All we have to do is change that to repeat and the pattern will be repeated as the stroke continues. Because it's a border, I will increase that to about 250 pixels, just to ensure that we can see all the details once we place it on the canvas. You can make it bigger if you want. Now we're gonna press OK. And we have our brush here. Now, the cool thing is that we can actually use a rectangle option for that. And with the rectangle created, I'm just gonna add round edges, like so and maybe slightly smaller, so 10% radius, so they're not that wide. And with the snapping on, I will align it to center just for my own purpose. And then with this rectangle or square selected, we can choose this brush and it will literally just put on our border into that shape outline. Now again, we can change almost everything about it. So I will increase that to 500 pixels. And I will also change the color to match with the previous line work that we've done there for testing purposes. And it will match with the overall look like so. I've added a couple of different frames to here as well. And as you can see, some of them work better than the others. If you do have squares, they will be stretched over the corners you can change the settings of it between if you go to edit you got corner pull fold or overlap pull and fold don't really make that big of a difference in overlap if you do have a very square corners so let me just adjust that to zero with the overlap you can see that they literally going to overlap one with each other pull will stretch them even further and then fold will look exactly the same as pull. So what it does is literally pulling it against that sharp corner and then pulling it again from this angle to create this corner at an angle. And that's the reason why I do like to add those into a shape that has a rounded corners. Even 5% of that curvature gives you a better result than the overlapping straight line or the pull onto the sharp point of the corner. This is a quick overview of the new textured intensity brush. If you do have any questions, let me know. The main things that you do have to remember is to make it white on the black background. And if you did create some graphics in Procreate previously, make sure that they are in horizontal rather than vertical aspect ratio because when you create the brushes in Affinity Designer, it will take the horizontal orientation to put one next to each other if you want to repeat them or stretch them. So if you're more familiar with Procreate and you want to create those graphics there, feel free to do so. You can then bring them over into Affinity Designer and apply them to the curved shapes to create your borders in a more seamless way. Have fun creating new brushes and applying them to your work. We will come back to the vector brush creation, but for today, the texture intensity brush will give you a good basic to create your own frames and line work to use on your map. Thanks so much for watching. If you do have any questions, pop them in the comments. Have a great time creating and I will see you in the next one. Bye.